What's up, Facebook world? We're here practicing social distancing. We're gonna do some haircutting, so we're excited. Um, we're here to kind of share what kind of keeps us creative in this weird time in the world. So if you guys have questions, comments, concerns, contributions, uh, jump on, drop them in here. There's a 100% chance we're not gonna get to all of them, but we're gonna do our best. And uh, we're a bit, taking over on the Hairbrain Live today. So um, we're missing our host, Gerard, but he's here in spirit. So um, today it's just Clinton and I. Um, we're gonna hold it down. So if you guys have questions, comments, concerns, like I said, drop them in the comment section um, and we'll try and get on with it. But we're cutting hair in the living room. It's the back cave. This is where it is. This is my living room. Um, and <clears throat> We decided that it was the best place to film our live currently, um, just to keep things uh, separate but equal, you know? So, <laughs> what we're gonna do today is we're gonna go through a little bit of a creative haircut, uh, but we're gonna use the principles and the foundations of haircutting to create something that's pretty cool. So I've actually pre braided out some disconnection on my haircut. You can see like the hairline has been sectioned out and braided on both sides. Um, and you'll kind of see how that plays in later, but we're going to work really pretty straightforward with our haircut. We're going to work a round shape this way and a round shape this way. So we're going to cut a little bit of like for those that have taken a state board test. Uh, similar to your state board haircut, essentially. Um, I'm going to start right on top, section number one. I'm going to pull straight out from its base. And I'm going to cut a round cutting line. So what's really important is my choice of length. If I cut it too short, the hair is going to stick up. If I cut it too long, it's not going to wrap around the head the way I want it to. So it's really important that I work on section number one and make sure that my choice of length is ideal for the end result. So I may end up cutting section number one more than once, just to make sure that I've got the choice of length and the shape I want. You got lots of love coming through. James Mold is watching. James. Uh, our good friend Skylar Marsh is watching. He said, what's up friends? What's up? Joe is watching from New York. And then we have a Joe lot of Pro? people. Yeah. Cool. If you guys like what you see, just share it. So that way we can get some people on chatting it up. So I'm pretty happy with this choice of length. I want to have a little bit of length in the front for some softness or steering it around if I want to. Um, so that's the guide that's going to help me get through the rest of my entire haircut. So I'm going to split that in half and I'm going to keep working all the way around. Work in pie sections because that's gonna help me create the most fluid shape around the rounds of the head. We were gonna use a model, but um, we didn't have scissors long enough to remain the social distancing of <laughs> six feet. <laughs> Jess says, what's up? Jess? Joe. Joe. Yeah. Michael Bonacchi says, what's up? What's up? And then Christina Calandra wants to know, what are we creating? We are going to create a short, round haircut that hugs the bone structure, hugs the head shape with some disconnection around the hairline. So we're not looking to reinvent the wheel. We're not looking to um, create anything that is out of the ordinary. I think when we revisit the basics, we revisit the fundamentals. That's what allows us to create something that is um, really quite extraordinary. So it's an understanding of those things. And that's one thing we stress too with varsity education. Um, Clinton and I have started a little passion project called varsity education and we kind of drive a lot of the understanding of the fundamentals and the basics and the principles of haircutting um, before we start to do anything that's combining um, techniques and ideas and, and shapes. You got some love coming in from Kentucky, from Scotland. Scotland? Uh, yeah, Scotland. Hey, Heck Don. Yeah. From Sc yeah, Don from Scotland is watching. Uh, 
got people from Mexico, Atlanta, Douglas McCoy is watching. Um, yeah, people from all over Puerto Rico. Everybody's at home, just yeah. bored. Um, and then we have a question from, I believe it's Danielle Woods. She wants to know if you're over-directing at all. Okay, great question, Danielle. Um, the question was, am I over-directing at all? My goal is to... Oh, neighbor's dog's barking. <laughs> um, my goal is to take every section straight out from where it lives. So perpendicular to the head shape. So as I cut my sections... I am using some of the previously cut hair as a guide, but my goal is to cut all the hair the same length. So with that being said, I'm gonna try and maintain the idea that I'm going to over direct or not over direct consistently, meaning that I'm gonna pull all the hair straight out from its base. So I keep my Let's eye on the root. Better. The root's gonna tell me how much over direction, how much elevation I'm using. We took a brand new mannequin straight out of the bag to cut all the hair off. We didn't ration this one. I actually bought this mannequin just now for three rolls of toilet paper. <laughs> it's worth it. Hashtag worth it. Um, we have some questions coming in as yeah. well. We have some people from the UK saying hi that they are self isolation self isolating from the UK. So thank you for doing that, uh, lowering that curve. And then also uh, we have some questions on what scissors are you using and why. Okay, great question. So the the question about the scissors, um, what scissors am I using and why? So um, with Varsity Education, we've actually chosen to partner with Mizutani and they've created our scissors. So this one is um, one that we designed and we had the privilege to design with them. And we have them in black and silver, but I prefer this one because of how I can move the scissor in my hands. Mm. Um, typically you use about a five or a five and a half inch scissor. Um, for me, that tends to be um, an appropriate length for me to create what I need. And it doesn't have any excess or get in the way or too short or anything like that. But we're using a varsity scissor from Mizutani. Nice. You got some people from Poland, New Zealand, South Carolina, Serbia. Wow. That's nice. It's a global community. Absolutely. Welcome, everyone. Brooklyn Cardenas says, what's up, boys? Hey, what's Brooklyn. What's up, Brooklyn? And then Richard McDade said, Lucas, it's a pandemic, not a flood. You are uh, referring to my pants? <laughs> I think he is. You know, I was cleaning out my closet using this uh, time that I have during self, uh, self distancing or social distancing. And I've actually been cleaning out my closet. So I actually rediscovered these pants, Richard, and they were longer about an hour ago. And then I cut them shorter. So you're welcome. That's great. Uh, Gerard on here to let us know that if you go to pivotpointshop.com, uh, you can get 25% off mannequins and tripods. For those that you uh, that are at home wanting to work on your craft and that have the means to do that, uh, a great place to be able to get some mannequins to be able to work on your craft, even though uh, the world is slowing down, doesn't mean that you have to with your craft. It's great. Heck yeah, Gerard. Thank you for that. Yeah. It'd be a fun thing to kind of get your friends all together and just cut hair together on like um, a conference call or something. Yeah, Zoom has been... Group FaceTime yeah. or Instagram call or anything like that. North Wales is watching. That's great. Wow, that's cool. Very, very cool. I was uh, just out in that neck of the woods recently. Yeah, you were. Adam Federico is watching. What's going on, Adam? And What's then up, Mandy Adam? Drake. Uh, she's from the Palmetto School in Chicago. Fantastic hair cutter. Overall amazing person she's watching. Oh, very cool. Thank you for being here, guys. It really means a lot that you took a little time out of your day to... Hang out with us in the living room. It's like you're all in my living room. This is great. It's like a house party. With no, we're not together though. I know you could be anywhere else right now, taking naps or, or uh, you know, staring at the ceiling. But we appreciate you being here. It, it means a lot to us, and we're happy to um, help in any way, or or ask answer questions, or just chat and listen, or whatever anyone needs. So a few more people have joined since we first began starting the haircut. Do awesome. you want to give like a little bit of a 
kind of a re- recap since you're over to a different portion of the hairline? Yeah, absolutely. So what I'm working on, on our lovely model here that loves everything we do, <laughs> is I'm creating a head hugging layered shape. So um, I've chosen to cut a layered shape that follows the head shape. So meaning that it's round, like a crop or, or um, a short layer or anything, something like that. Um, what I've done is I've actually braided out portions of the hairline to act as some disconnection. Just because we have that opportunity and we're able to get a little bit creative and as hairdressers, we've got to keep our creative mind going in these, these times of um, social distancing. So braided out some of the hairline to act as a disconnection when we get to that point. And what I'm doing is I'm cutting a layered shape, following the head shape, started on the top and I'm just pivoting around the top of the head. So right around the high point, just taking little pie shaped sections and cut in a shape that is round and follows the head shape. Nice. So revisiting the basics with a little bit of disconnection and you'll see how that plays in afterward. But if you like it, share it. Let's see if we can get some people on here. Um, questions, comments, concerns, nothing's off limits. I'm surprised I haven't got the uh, how many tattoos do you have question. That tends to be a favorite one. <laughs> yeah. Someone said they really are digging the plants in the background. Okay, cool. You can thank my roommate for that. And you can thank Clinton for deciding to uh, position us right here. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So with long hair, a lot of times um, it can be kind of tough to manage. And I think as long as you maintain consistent section sizes and good control and even moisture, um, you should be able to work through it a little bit um, easier than if you were inconsistent with the moisture and things like that. So see how this has just fallen right over the head shape, sitting really nice on the bone structure. Um, that's exactly what we want. And a lot of people are just like thanking you for, you know, taking the time to share your knowledge and to kind of help the global community come together, you know, and gain knowledge. That's really cool. Absolutely. And if there's other stuff you guys want to see, we can throw it on our personal channels. Um, drop it on here. I know Gerard is on, so he can kind of take some suggestions too. If there's stuff that you guys are looking to see, inspired by, or just want to get on and hear from certain people, um, Gerard's the guy that can make it happen. And he's really created an awesome community of hairdressers and keeps us all inspired, keeps us all going. Um, and much love to you, Gerard and Hairbrain, for doing what you do for the community of hairdressers. Absolutely. So now I'm working down into the hairline. I've moved the head to help me get into these positions. And also, what you notice too is I changed the way I hold my scissors just to get into these smaller, tighter areas. And it helps me maintain a better body position. It's not, it's a pandemic, not a blood. That's really funny. That is really funny. Real quick, uh, George just wanted to kind of double check and make sure that you're not over directing the hair. You're just taking it straight out of its base each time vertically and horizontally. Yes, great question, George. Um, we are trying to maintain the same over direction and elevation. So everything's straight out from its base, straight out from where it lives. Um, like that 90 degree haircut, just on a shorter level with some disconnection. So really playing with a classic with the fundamentals um, and working our way through the haircut. Paying attention to the root because that's really gonna tell me how much over direction and how much elevation I've used. I wanna to hear too, a little bit about what people are doing to kind of stay inspired. I know a lot of us aren't in the salon working on our clients. Who knows what they're gonna come back looking like, cutting their own hair. <laughs> and then a lot of people are asking too, you know, just how you're holding your scissor. And I think a lot of people are noticing like a little bit of a trend or uh, like a different skill set that's being utilized as we hold our scissors in our hand. Do you want to talk a little bit about how you're holding your scissors and then why you decided to? Yeah, uh, definitely. Choose holding your scissors that way. Um, 
Specifically in this part of the haircut, it helps me get into those tighter areas while keeping my body for the most part pretty upright. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about, uh, you know, I was inspired as a young hairdresser by a lot of people that, uh, a lot of the same people that we're all inspired by. Like DJ Muldoon was one of my biggest inspirations when I was a young hairdresser. Right. And so when I started cutting hair, I got these big like hands that like cut hair with like Mickey Mouse gloves on. It's crazy. <laughs> Um, so I used to hold my scissor like this. So in turn, to cut over my hand, I had to lift my elbow above my shoulder and bend my wrist pretty sharply. So then I started to evolve to this. So then I'd stay horizontal. And then my shoulders still got tired, so all I did then is I dropped my shoulders and learned how to move my scissor without moving my wrist. Now what that helps me do is instead of being in this position to cut overhand, I was instead in this position to cut overhand. So the only difference is we've taken a scissor, which is a fixed object, and we've learned how to move it from here to here while keeping our wrist straight. So it helps me stay upright rather than leaning and lifting my elbow above my shoulder. So you've seen a lot of people evolve to that, and I think it's just um, started as a, as a natural progression of things and some people pioneered it. Like I think the first person I saw do it was Mario from Zgat. Right. Um, and I, I, I was like, why is he doing that? That's so weird. And then I tried it just cause I wanted, I thought it looked cool essentially and realized that that actually added a certain level of comfort for me while cutting hair. So I just continued to do it and it, continued to become more and more and more comfortable. So I know, um, I know Clinton does it. I know, um, James and Ben do it. Um, James especially, I know has been doing it for a long time, but it allows me to cut hair this way instead of this way. Right. So I go from here to here. Well, I think we got a lot of that just from being like the punk rock guys that we are. If someone told us to do something, we didn't necessarily say, okay, cool. I'm just going to do what you say and not question it. We actually started to think about what are some other ways that we could do this and continue to do this. So I think that was one of those things too that a lot of us have is how do we, do we have to do it the way that our beauty school teacher told us to, like the flat arms, acting like a robot, you know, we just said don't have to do that. Yeah. Uh, some other questions uh, that are coming in. Um, <laughs> uh, Gerard likes to sell portrait behind you. If you guys didn't see it, it's up here. Oh, yeah. Just get into yeah, that, man. There it is real quick. Just so you can <laughs> all see it really, really good. That was done by my friend in Florida. She hand drew that for me and mailed and he, it. He commented on your meat paws there. Catcher's mitts. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, people said they always kept their you know, elbow up, which is kind of weird. Um, they said something about a, a swivel thumb scissor will help with that. Um, Karen loves a swivel scissor. Yeah, I think swivel swivel thumb scissors are great. Um, I think I, I'm, you know, I used to be a little bit more particular about tools. Now I'm very open about tools and I think that whatever tool you need to use to give you the best end result, as long as you understand what you're doing, awesome tool. Um, I think that very similarly to a, a swivel thumb, I've just learned how to move my scissor around in my hand to create the same results that a swivel thumb does. Right? Instead of changing the tool. Yeah, yeah, instead of changing the tool, I just like would practice moving my hand. And then uh, Marina was the one that had the question. She's asking if the blades cut the same way. If the blades cut the same way. Yeah, she, she feels awkward to hold them, so she can't get the same grip on the blades. She was wondering if that changes for you at all. Um, not necessarily, because I do have a big hand. So my thumb sits right on top, and I just push in and out. The only difference that you'll run into is if you put your thumb underneath, now you've basically turned your scissor into the opposite thing that it's intended for. So I just turned a right-handed scissor into a left-handed scissor. So mm. now the way I'm applying pressure to the handle actually causes the blades to pull apart, yeah. which will in turn sometimes push hair or bend hair. So you wanna do your best to keep your thumb on top and move it in and out rather than up and down. Could you do maybe like one more like close-up so people wanna see a slow motion of how you did that from maybe the traditional position okay. and then switching it over into, I mean, everybody keeps calling it the Eastern grip. I mean, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. So how you actually do that. So I'm going to, I call it the, uh, Taco Bell grip. The ta it doesn't matter what you call it. <laughs> right. It doesn't, it doesn't. So I, I went from here 
And all I did was drop, 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 drop. My scissors stayed in one place. And now I'm moving my, still only moving one blade. This is still stationary, but I've instead started moving my thumb in and out. Right, that's great. And did you get it the first time you tried it? No, no. absolutely not. Nobody does. <laughs> no one does. Yeah, so when you're playing around with it and kind of like learning it, I would suggest practicing over a softer surface or a table so that when you, uh, if you drop your scissor, you don't drop it on the, you know, concrete floor in the salon or mm -hmm. anything like that. And so now that we're here to the center back, do you want to do like a quick recap? Some more people have joined on that necessarily weren't here at the beginning just to give them a little bit of a, a review of where you're yeah. at, what you're doing. Absolutely. So what we're doing is now we've worked all the way to the center back. Um, and I'm cutting a round layer or like a short cropped layer that follows the head shape. So everything is being overdirected and elevated 90 degrees out from its base so that I can create this layered shape that sits right over the bone structure, all the hairs laying down. I've braided out some disconnections, so we'll get to that um, afterward. Mm -hmm. But I'm gonna work one section past the center, which will be now. And then I'm gonna go back to the front, <clears throat> and I'm gonna work my way around. I could, because this shape is round and round and round and round, I could work one way all the way around, but I just think for balance and continuity, it's gonna give me a better end result to revisit the front and work around. And we'll get some better views of some of that based on body position. Yeah, so. so those that jumped in, you'll kind of see like what it looked like from the beginning too. So everything is based off of that first section I cut, that central section that I cut on top of the head. And then combing, do you have a specific, you know, way you're combing, are you combing from your uncut section to your guide or from your guide to your uncut section? I am combing from my guide into my uncut section. And what that's doing is it's helping me, because I know my tendencies, it's helping me to maintain the same over direction. So it's helping me to make sure that all this hair gets pulled straight out from its base, and I'm not over directing the hair to be cut too far to the guide. Because mm. then it would make the hair longer. And in a situation like this, Jade was curious if you count your sections, even though there's not any over direction. Are you still counting the sections that you use? Um, I do count my sections quite a lot. Um, in this situation, I'm not. The only reason being is because everything's going to be the same length. I'm really a stickler about counting sections when you get into like graduated shapes. Um, anyone who's taken classes with us or with me is I'm always counting sections on graduated shapes because it helps me make sure that things are balanced. And that's my biggest challenge as a hairdresser for me is balance left to right. And if I count my sections, especially on graduation where you're building weights and it's very unforgiving, it helps me to make sure that everything stays that way. Right. Mm -hmm. So Marina has awesome questions and we encourage you guys to yeah. continue to ask questions. Is that Marina Lantos? No, I don't know how to say Marina's last name. Okay. And I don't right. know if I want to butcher it. Yeah. But. Safe. Better yeah. safe than sorry. Last I, initial. I hope it's Marina E. Yeah. <laughs> so Marina says, do you always have a really, this is a great question. We even were kind of talking about this right before we started, but do you always have a clear picture in mind of the final look uh, when you do a creative haircut? Um, that is a very good question, Marina. So the question is, do I always have an end result in mind? or an end picture or, um, so yes and no. Um, I know that's probably not the answer you wanted to hear, but <laughs> the reason why I say yes and no is because um, we always have a plan. And as Mike Tyson says, everybody has a plan until they get punched in the face, okay? So we always have a general <laughs> idea of what we're trying to do. Like, oh, this might be cool, this would be cool, this would be cool. So we have a general direction. I don't think we have a specific route, right? We wanna get from point A to point B. Sometimes you start on that journey and you have to call an audible or something based on texture, density, limitations, discoveries, whatever you come across. Maybe there's an obstacle and you gotta get around it. 
but we look at going from point A to point B, getting to the end result, but how we get there may change along the way. Um, but we always have a general idea on what we um, are looking to create, with a creative haircut especially. Right. I got some clarification on Marina's last name. Okay. Uh, Phonetic spelling? Yeah. Um, and I'm going to try, is it Imonale or Emonale? Probably Imonale. She's from Italy. Okay. Nice, Marina. Thanks I'm gonna, for tuning in. I'm going to try to say Imonale. That sounds right. Sounds more Italian? I don't know. I don't know either. Here's a really good visual of lack of over direction. So I have the head tilted over, and if you think my eye is looking right at your scalp line to tell me where that hair is being elevated to, where it's being over directed to, so I can look at the root of the hair. Nice, I got it with the uh, the Italian tongue. You did? Yeah. Nice. <laughs> the Italian accent, got it. Good call. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Appreciate you all. Much love. If you guys have questions, comments, concerns, contributions, just want to say hello. Clinton's on the camera, so if you guys have questions for him, jump in. Yeah. Um, anything that pertains to hair, um, We'd love to, love to help out if we can while we demonstrate a little bit of a creative haircut on a mannequin in my living room. So we're coming to you from San Diego, California. Yep. California is on a bit of a social distancing lockdown. So we'll, uh, we'll, bring, the, we'll bring the hair to you. Don Campbell said, since you mentioned it, how many tattoos do you have? This is a funny story. So I've got a lot, but um, once they all touch each other, it's like one nacho, you know? <laughs> so we've decided that I have seven and it's one arm, one leg, or excuse me, one arm, one arm, uh, one leg, one leg. So that's four. Four tattoos. My whole front is five. My back is six and my head is seven. So I've got seven tattoos done. Great question. Nice. And then... Uh, let's see. Danielle, let us know if the sound is a little bit better. She said it was a little bit muffled. That's probably Clinton's hand over the microphone. Probably my hand trying to get these amazing views for you guys. <laughs> Getting a little... <laughs> uh, and then how would you modify this for uh, someone with growth patterns then? You know, if someone has like a, maybe a kick in the crown or, you know, a swirl okay. pattern going on, what would you do to modify this or change it? Um, I think that... So we're working on a mannequin, so obviously we don't have growth patterns or whirls or any hair that would like, you know, get a little bit crazy or start break dancing if you cut it too short. Right. Um, but on a human, what I would do is I would base my sectioning pattern off of their growth pattern. So I might use their growth pattern in the crown as the area where I pivot. Um, and that will just allow me to compensate for how the hair falls naturally. Uh, that's a great question, and that's something that I look for in all short haircuts, male or female, is to make sure that I am compensating for those growth patterns because I want the hair to be able to um, air dry, do it with minimal effort, and have it be suitable to their lifestyle, their texture, their density, their growth patterns, all of those things. So I would use their growth pattern as um, a reference or a starting point with my sectioning to make sure that I maintain uh, awareness of where that is and I don't cut it too short. And then we had a few things coming through. Uh, Jessica missed part of it. Um, did you get to the middle and then jump back to uh, the front side or how far did you cross over in that portion? Um, yeah, Jessica, we actually worked one path, one section past the center this way, and then I came back to the front and now I'm working from the front backward. Mm -hmm. So yeah, great question. You could work all the way around because the haircut is consistent front to back, left to right. But I know for me and my habits and my tendencies, it's helpful for me to go back to the front, revisit it, 
um, and then operate the same way I did on the other side. And then do you want to, I don't know if you want to touch on this gender kind of question, but would this cut work for male and female both? Yeah, yeah. I think it's 2020. I think you can wear whatever you want. Um, making adjustments based on texture and growth patterns and bone structure. You may have some adjustments on your sectioning or your choice of length, um, but it would just depend on your goals, right? This is very similar to like that short cropped layer that you see like um, back in those mod days, all yeah. the guys that were ripping around on scooters. It was like a little bit of a crop, kind of scruffy around the edges. This is a great way to create that look. Um, you might just make your disconnection shorter or maybe not have disconnection or, you know, there's a lot of different choices you can make. Um, we look at these like an exercise, like on a mannequin, this is fun to play around, but how would I adjust this for suitability based on a person? Right. And I think that's what's important for us as hairdressers is be able to make those choices um, for suitability because it's not always about like, how that person looks and feels when they leave, but like when they style their hair on their own, what's that process like, right. you know? What's that suitability like? What's that lifestyle change or how does that fit into their daily life, you know? Exactly. Uh, we got Danielle and Natty Caruso asking. Oh, what's up, Nat Caruso? <laughs> At what point do you get in your career where you don't cross check as much or is there a point, you know, I've heard a lot of like educators talk about it, you know, like, Hey, at some point, you know, even the Alalon guys, like at some point where you're not cross checking every two to three sections, not that that's bad, but at what point do you maybe get to a place where you feel like you don't have to cross check as much? Um, and then do you wait to do it at the end or one side at a time? Okay. Great question. That was from Natalie. Uh, yeah. And then our good friend, Danielle, she was asking oh, cool. some questions too. Awesome. Yeah. Um, Great question. So at what point do you stop cross-checking? Never yeah. <laughs> um, for me. For this particular haircut, because it is such a repetitive um, over direction and elevation, I feel pretty confident um, that I can maintain consistency. So I'm actually gonna cross-check the whole thing when it's done. Um, also, because I'm going from such a long length to such a shorter length, it's going to be easier to cross check it with less hair on the head mm -hmm. than with like long panels, you know? So for me, I'm going to cross check at the end. Um, I would say that, and it all depends on the haircut for me. Um, I would say that when I'm cutting a graduated shape, I cross check like every three sections. Oh yeah. Um, just because that is really unforgiving. Um, because if you get off course towards the beginning and then you keep going off course, it's gonna be really hard to rewrite that, you know? Mm. So I think on really technical haircuts with a really strong buildup of weight, um, I may cross check more often, but because I am cutting all this hair the same length, um, straight out from its base, um, I'm not gonna cross check every three sections. I'm gonna cross check at the very end. I'm gonna cross check the whole thing. So Pedro here, I don't know if everyone wants to know this, but when and how did you guys first meet? Who, me and Pedro? <laughs> I believe um, you're referring to you and me, Lucas. I know. I know. I'm not sure, but I'm going to take a stab at it. <laughs> I'm going to just go out on a limb and say this. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, and you can throw in your two cents too, Clinton. But So Clinton and I actually probably ran in similar parallel crowds as young people. Um, in the music scene, we got a lot of mutual friends. I'm surprised we didn't meet each other more back then, honestly. I know, but, right? um, grew up in the same area of San Diego, um, you know, during that time. So we were probably at a lot of these same social gatherings, which we're not having now. Um, but I think when we really kind of really became good pals was when you were working at a Robert Croming salon. Yeah. And I was there and we were both sitting there um, towards the front of the salon. We wanted to sit next to each other because we're like two dudes. We're like, yeah, the man, that's cool. We were kind of nerdy about like haircutting and we would spin our clients in the chairs to face each other. So instead of like yeah. two people chatting, it was like the four of us, which uh, was a really great time. And I think um, we grew a lot. We learned a lot about each other in that time. And mm -hmm. um, that's when we really kind of like built a pretty strong friendship and 
it's grown from there and we both have you know similar passions and uh, we're into a lot of the same things Mm -hmm. so you know it's just kind of grown from there i don't know if you want to add to that yeah i mean that's kind of where we started teaching our first classes together you know we we taught our first class trying to to get your ticket to gathering yeah i needed to pay to go to gathering uh and so we use all the proceeds to <laughs> yeah. to fund me going to get my ticket We're and like, stuff. like, how can we get a class going so that we could get uh, Clinton to go to Paul Mitchell Gathering? Yeah. There. So um, that's, that was how we taught our first class. And we Funny were, fact now, we actually are going to be artists at Gathering this coming year. Yeah. So August, yeah. when they reopen Vegas, yeah. um, we'll be teaching a class there. It's going to be awesome. So if you don't already have a ticket, get one. Um, come hang out with us. We're going to be cutting hair. It's going to be sweet. So just, just to catch up on some questions, um, I can maybe fill some of this in while you do it. Virginia is asking, what type of haircut are you doing? It's a round layer following the head shape, same length from bottom to top and front to back. And there's a few disconnections left out along the hairline for detailing. Um, and then Renee Stone uh, had uh, two questions. Music scene, question mark. I'm sure she's asking what music scene. The jazz music scene. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the jazz flute music scene. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, it was like, what, heavy music? Just yeah. Hardcore. Hardcore heavy hardcore metal scene. stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then, are we quarantined together? <laughs> are we quarantined together? I mean, not, not, uh, I, don't, I don't, I mean, currently, yes. Yeah, right now we are. Yeah, we're, um, not, we're not going outside of our household. Yeah, no, Clinton and his family are one of the few people that I've been exposed to, so. Yeah. And if I get sick, I'll, I won't make it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I've got a weak immune system. Right. And yeah, so we're not, we're not quarantined together, but we are experiencing some social distancing. <laughs> you know, we're staying at home. I'm staying at Lucas's home right now as we do this. All right, so now what I'm going to do is since I pivoted around the entire head this way, Mm -hmm. I'm going to cross check now coming across my sections, picking them up. And if I need to dust them, this would be the point when I would just clean them up. So I do want to make sure that I cross over multiple sections, the opposite direction from which I cut it a little bit here. I'm going to clean that up. And I'll just work my way around. Because there's far less hair on the head now than there was, um, it just makes it a little bit easier for a cross check. Mm -hmm. Nice. And a shorter haircut's easier to blow dry on live, so. Yeah. (laughs) We had a model lined up, but we just didn't feel like it was the best time for that. And then uh, Marina, again, with another amazing question. How do you know you are straight out from the base? What things do you pay attention to? I know you mentioned it a little bit, but do you want to yeah, so hit on that? The, the most important thing you can look at when you're trying to maintain consistent over direction and elevation is the root of the hair. So now I'm going to try and do this with you looking. Yeah. So if, for instance, I take a section here. What I want to look at is I want my eye looking at the hair here. Not so much the hair here. The scissors straight, it's going to cut a straight line. But if I'm looking at the root of the hair, I can tell how much Mm. that moves. So if I'm paying close attention to that, I know that I can have the head in any position and cut a clean line and make it consistent. Nice. Really good. And then uh, some people are asking, how can someone take a one-on-one with you guys in the future after the social distancing and the world hopefully goes back to a better You know what? If if you got a hazmat suit, come to the living room. (laughs) (laughs) No, don't do that. Don't do that. Yeah, don't come over. We'll lock the door. Don't come. Yeah. You know, keep your distance. Drop it and run, you know. Right. Um, (laughs) I think that in the future, um, we're actually using our social distancing to actually... um, finish cleaning up some of our varsity stuff and getting it all kind of finalized and finished. So for us, you know, if you want to looking into booking a one-on-one, 
uh, shoot a direct message to our varsity Instagram. Yeah. Um, website should be up and running in a little bit. We've got some free time to finish that up nowadays. So uh, there'll be an email there. So feel free to contact us on there. Any of our personal pages, mine's Lucas Doney or Clinton's is Clinton Cuts Hair. So any of those sources um, are great resources to kind of get in touch with us and kind of uh, be aware of what's available in the future. Absolutely. We got a lot of cool stuff planned. I'm excited about yeah. the rest of this year. And then uh, uh, Steven Sanchez, uh, he was just curious from about... From Fresno? Uh, maybe. Okay. Steven Sanchez Jr.? I think from Fresno. Okay. Uh, he wants to hear your thoughts or preferences on cutting lotions versus good old water. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Great question, Steven. Um, in regards to cutting lotions, I typically don't use a ton of cutting lotion. Like if it's like a really light uh, spray in kind of moisturizer or something like that. Palmachol has a great product called Awapui Moisture Mist. Mm-hmm. Um, Davinus makes a great product called Dede Mist. Mm-hmm. Uh, but any of those really lightweight, light conditioning products, um, those are the ones that I enjoy because it doesn't put a lot of product in the hair, but it gives me enough to slip and slide and, and things like that. If those aren't available, I love to just have a handy water bottle. So for me, I don't necessarily need those products, but they are a nice to have for sure. Right. Especially on certain hair types, you might choose a heavier one or a different type or um, whatever brand you work with. I'm sure they have really light detanglers or, or a light conditioning spray, something like that. And then maybe it's a quick overview as you kind of like turn the doll head so we can see a little 360. Yeah. yeah. So round on round, So what that does is helps make this hug the head shape. And we're gonna put an outline in the back here and probably an outline in the front. Um, This is that disconnection. So this is the hairline that I left out. Completely disconnected. There's no connection from any of this to any of this. Um, So it should have a kind of a cool end result where this is really form fitting and kind of this really light like skirty edge to it. Um, And I'm just gonna, I'm actually gonna add some data mist and I'm going to start wrap drying. It should go pretty quick because the hair is pretty short. I've never blow dried a mannequin in my living room. Yeah, first time for everything. First time for everything. Lucas has his self portrait up here, and then I also have my self portrait. That was fun. <laughs> painted for me over there. That's me. He hung that up. And this then... is a metaphor of me um, wrangling a wild llama. Nice. But it, it really happened though. Like it. Like it. Just to clarify. And yes, we both are wearing really uh, it's cas- mandatory. casual. You know, short pants help not help you not get sick. Yeah. You know, keeps, keeps your pants above the virus. Short pants and Crocs. Yeah. I can't be left alone, like I can't be held responsible for the fashion choices I make, uh, especially in these dark times. Yeah. Karen said that her sister had this haircut in the 70s. Oh, great. It's timeless. I wish she still had it. Yeah. I hope she still has it. Yes. Timeless haircuts are good. Danielle said it's an MTV Cribs tour of your place. Don't go in my room because I took everything out of my closet and I'm just going through it all. That's why I have these weird clothes on. (laughs) That's all you had left. So I want to talk a little bit about a blow dry. So what's really important is um, if you're going to go through a technical haircut and you're going to put a lot of attention to the haircut, I would encourage you to maintain that dedication and discipline on the blow dry. Um, A lot of times we look for the fastest way to do it or or the quickest way to finish it. Um, what I want to be mindful of is I took the nozzle off of my blow dryer. Mm. I'm keeping the airflow down. And I've actually decided to use a bigger brush so that I could almost use it like the size of my hand and really form that hair around the head and keep it nice and smooth. You could use a smaller brush, that's perfectly okay. And then by taking the nozzle off, I've almost diffused some of the air so it's not moving the hair as much, I get to move the hair with the breath. Right. And then Marina asks who's behind the camera? Uh, that's my friend Clinton Norris. <laughs> you can find him at Clinton Cuts Hair 
Um, or what's your Facebook name? Like Clinton David Norris or something like that? I don't know. I don't ever use Facebook. You're using it right now. I know, right? <laughs> um, but on Instagram, Clinton Cuts Hair. Um, him and I run a little project we call Varsity. So we're excited to kind of have that on the forefront. Some cool stuff this year coming up. But, see this living room a lot more, hopefully. Yeah, you see this living room quite a lot. It's going to be a famous living room by the time we go back to work. <laughs> yeah. Anyone wants to rent out the living room? Available. <laughs> Joe wants to know what's in your fridge. Joe wants to know what's in my fridge. Well, there's two tiny sprites because I, I wanted to make sure Clinton was um, doesn't go thirsty. Man likes a sprite. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of fruits and vegetables and then some meal prep asparagus and steak and overnight oats and things like that yeah, what else you need that's great yeah I don't know if anybody watches The Office Lucas doesn't but this looks like Michael Scott's bed there that's the reading note if you watch The Office it looks like his bed when him and Jan live together just if anybody watches The Office. I know it's the most streamed show right now on Netflix, but... You know what? This would be my time to catch up and watch Dude, all of them. You just need to get into it. I just need to suck it up and come in. Lucas doesn't watch The Office. It's weird. But there's always time for that. You got time now. Got nothing but time, really. <laughs> What's everybody doing to pass the time? I want to hear that. Drop yeah. Your, your number one thing that you're doing to pass the time. Besides watch online haircuts. Yeah, right. Right now. You can't use whatever you're doing right this minute. What you did yesterday. Renee Stone never watched The Office either. All right, Renee. Squad up. That's right. Let's resist. But they say what you resist persists. Yes. So the more you don't watch it, the more people are going to tell you to watch it. Like right now. And then <laughs> Marina's asking if there's enough distance. I think so. This is like yeah. six feet, right? Yeah. Close enough. I think like my arm's probably three feet. Yeah. Ish. Yeah. Yeah, we still got some space. <laughs> uh, Cynthia Blyer, she has been doing some decluttering. Same. Love that. Denise is watching you and reading. Uh, Heather is trying to watercolor, do watercolor painting. All right, I love that. Uh, Danielle Woods is trying to figure out distance learning. Same. Uh... And then uh, Mara opening up her own salon. She's super excited. Uh, Steve, he's never seen an episode of The Office either. Cleaning and baking. We got working in the garden. Yeah. Sean is cleaning and building models. Uh, Steven from, where was he from? Fresno. Fresno, that's right. Uh, he's not watching The Office. He's doing yoga and organizing. Jade's doing so much yoga. Christy Burke is cleaning. To get rid of junk, doing some yoga, found some old DVDs. That's great. Some what? Some old DVDs. What are those? I know, right? Uh, Jordan. Oh, uh, Jordan's hanging with his wife and kids and strengthening those family bonds. That's what we need. I love that. That's great. Jeremy McDougs. Uh, he's read more in the past few months than he has in a long time. I didn't even know you could read, Jeremy. <laughs> uh, Jess is playing Sims and watching haircutting videos. Jessica is reading and hanging out with kids. Uh, time drills for foiling. That's awesome. Ukulele and calligraphy. Oh my gosh, Jessica. Ukulele. That's so... That's great. You're going to come out uh, an amazing, even more amazing person yeah, on the end of this. Yeah, album's going to drop here soon. Mandy Drake potty training her child. Oh, how's that? I mean, if this have, is the time to do it... Have you gotten to that uh, point, Clinton, or no? Yeah. Merrick can pee on the potty, for sure. Yeah. Uh, that was a great time. If you're into it, you could potty train your cat to use the toilet, too. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, Larry is riding a bike on his trainer. So when it warms up, he'll be able to go outside. Uh, Hannah's spending quality time with a 10 month old. Isabel, uh, besides watching haircuts, doing haircuts, doing yoga, cleaning. Uh, we got Jill, catching up on housework, uh, doing some appropriate uh, distancing. Um, Don's been uh, redecorating her house. Uh, Cielo's been. Let's see. I don't know. He's talking about maybe his hair is dead. I don't know. And then uh, Jenny is eating pizza and watching you. Heck yeah. If you could bring some 
social distance pizza to my house, that would be great. Yeah. Amy's working at the hospital because the salon is closed. Wow, Amy, yeah. I appreciate you. Thank you for doing that. That's great. Yeah. So still using my blow dryer with no nozzle. Goal is to diffuse some of that airflow so that I can keep the air moving in a downward direction. So using my brush more so to control the hair and keeping my airflow down to keep a minimal amount of volume in the shape. Nice. What do you like about your Dyson? The P people has some question okay, about question. your Dyson. What do I like about the Dyson? Um, it's quiet. I have it on. Right now, I can still talk on a live, so that's great. It's great with clients, you don't have uh, have to shout or anything like that. It's very efficient on how it blow dries hair too. Um, quick, effective, really nice finish. Uh, great airflow, great amount of temperature too. Also, the nozzles that it comes with are very useful. Um, they help kind of concentrate that airflow to the right amount as you need it, especially when you're like round brushing or things like that. Um, I don't have anything negative to say about my Dyson. And what is the sticker that's on the side there? The sticker on the side, on which side? I got one here and one here. Oh, double-sided. Yeah, so my good friends started a great education company. It's called Free Education. They do online hair cutting education as well as online hair color education. So they've got um, videos that, tutorials that come out every week. I believe that they're still pumping them out. So uh, good friends, James and James Mold and Ben Crace. So it's James Mold on Instagram, M-O-U-L-D and Ben Crace. Gummy on, Beats. Which is Gummy Beats on Instagram. They originally started free education with hair cutting, and that grew, developed into a beautiful salon space that they have here in San Diego in Little Italy, as well as into um, a great opportunity to share some hair color education. And they have a great team that helps put that content out. Um, I know James and Ben are at the forefront of three, and then they have Haley Marshall yeah. and Danielle Milley. They do all the hair color education. So if you guys are at home, if you're watching and you're looking for some cool inspiration or some cool ideas, techniques, perspectives, um, haircuts and or hair color, check them out. Um, free education and free color education. There's definitely loads of stuff already in the library. So if you um, jump on and you start watching, there's. There's enough videos to hold you over for quite a while. They got some great content, great useful things, and just talented, brilliant individuals uh, that I'm thankful to call friends, you know? Richard McDay thought they were intake vents <laughs> on the side of your blow dryer, like the three education. Just, uh, it's high performance. <laughs> Top field dragster, you know? Cool. So I'm just gonna use this YS Park brush here that has two types of bristles on it. So this is gonna allow me to get a little bit more tension, especially on some of this longer lengths here. So as I pick this up, I'll use it a lot like a round brush. And this has a lot of tension, so you could even Use this brush a lot like a round brush if you wanted to spin it around like this. You could put a bend in hair just like you would on a round brush. Nice. Uh, Denise Gee, since you're self-isolating, she's gonna have her husband do her highlights. How's the best way for him to do oh the foils? Oh my gosh, get a cap. What's the easiest, oh my gosh. Yeah, Lucas says to get a cap and pull it through. Uh, and then Whitney Hunt, uh, she was asking about uh, Education. It's actually three. The number three. One, two, three. T H R E E. T H R E E. So three education. Um, and then Nat loves the fact that the Dyson's really easy to clean. Um, just put a filter and soapy water over every night. Yeah. So she loves the way that, that works, which is really smart. Yeah, and it'll tell you like it'll you know when it's time to clean your filter for sure. 
So just switching sides, still using my brush, my YS Park brush to give me a little extra tension. I put the nozzle on my blow dryer, so that's gonna allow me to focus that airflow a little bit more. And I'm gonna use it just like a little round brush to put a little bend on this hair so it's not stick straight. Um, back to that highlight question, man, that's scary. I think you should just do it yourself and have him do the back or the underneath or something. Yeah. You might be better off that way. Show him a video or something just so he yeah. knows how to pick up the hair. Tell him to go to threecolereducation.com, <laughs> yeah. watch some videos. That should set you up pretty well. Yeah, Autumn wants to know what kind of brush it was again. Okay, this is a, um, it's from YS Park. YS Park, yeah. This one's been around for a while, but it's got, originally it had a little tortoise right here. So it's a tortoise brush. I don't know the actual number, but it's a cushioned vented brush. So what's kind of cool, and I don't know how well you can see this or not, is when you use it, especially on a rounded object, the cushions like squish into the head. So as it squishes in, it increases the amount of tension you have. Mm. And these bristles feel really good on the head. So you can actually smooth it down, smooth it down, keep my airflow down. And I can use those double layers of bristles to really control hair and keep it like really, really smooth. Mm. You got that as a gift, so you don't know how much it costs, right? I believe that's a it's a fair investment. I, I think it's at least a hundred dollars. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah. It's not a not a cheap one. That one's wood, they make a plastic version too. Alright. So um I think it looks we, good. We could put a little outline in it. So now everybody who's watching probably sees this a little bit longer in the front and then back up. So the reason why that happens is because this shape directly reflects the hairline underneath. It's the same shape. So that tells me that my over direction and my elevation were pretty consistent to be able to have that reflect what the uh, hairline looks like. So feel good about that. Now, um, while we go through and refine it, I wanna have everybody drop their opinion in. Do we wanna have a really clean fringe area? Or do we want to have something that's like softer and uh, a little bit more loose? Nice. And I'm going to point through the rest of the haircut. So you've got to comment with your choice of a strong fringe and outline or something softer. And I'm going to work across my sections and just point through just lightly. Joe's um, Nike swoosh is what he said that you should chip into the front hairline. <laughs> Nike swoosh? Yeah. Steven Sanchez says soft and airy. Emiliani says stay safe, guys. Thanks for this. We all needed to stay inspired. We got clean, soft and loose, softer, soft. Whiskey, please. We don't drink. Yeah. Sprite? Yeah. Sprite and... and uh... Protein shakes, maybe? Jill loves it. She said soft and loose, soft and loose, softer fringe, says fun. Um, something out of Mad Max, dystopian. <laughs> We're almost there anyway, says Richard McDade. Clean and strong, Isabel says. Um, and then we, uh, Mandy Drake says clean. Uh, and then Skyler's kids said they're bummed they can't see me. I love Skyler's kids. I got some funny stories I can share about them. They're bummed they can't see you. On another time. They can hear you, but they can't see you. Yeah, I love Skyler's kids. Um, Amy says it looks really, really cool looking right now. And then Whitney says both maybe start off soft and end it with clean. Watching alive and staying alive. <laughs> yeah, there you go. We should have just played that song in the background on loop. Oh, staying alive? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm just working around my shape just like I did when I cross-checked it. And when I point my sections, I'm not looking to erase what I've done. I'm just looking to put a little more space into it. Leon also said maybe softer and then strengthen it up so I can see maybe both. Okay. That's a good idea. Yeah. We can do that. So something a bit softer, what I would tend to do 
is I'd work from the inside out. So I would slide from the shorter lengths into the outline. So you could do that backhand this way. And I'm just using the deepest part of the scissor right down here. And I'm just gonna gently open and close, open and close, open and close. So I can leave the length. Comb it, recomb it, recomb it. And you're not closing your scissor, right? Just no, like not at kind all. of pumping your thumb. Yeah, pumping my thumb. That's a great way to talk about it. So I, you might be able to see it here. Yeah. Almost like I'm chewing it a little bit. Now, based on my blow dry and how the hair is sewn into this mannequin, um, I noticed that it naturally wanted to go that way. Now, working that direction helps assist that and encourage that. If I wanted to go the other way, then I would come down and push the hair this way. So whenever I think about like slide cutting, especially like this, I think about slide cutting it in the direction that I want it to go. Mm. And I think a lot of times we get a little bit caught up in that we just go slide, 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 but we can actually encourage it to go a specific direction. You're creating these little short to long pieces yeah. in there that are giving some direction. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, almost like you're sculpting it out, that's right. Yep, it's a lot more like personalizing, less technical. So I'm just gonna kind of work my way from left to right, having all this hair go that direction. So keeping it pretty soft and I'm using my eye to visually look at where the hair is most dense and where it would need the most attention. So this has got a lot of space in it here. I'm mm -hmm. working in this area where you can't see through the hair as much. I guess friend Isabel was wondering, like when you're cutting banks on a client, do you use any kind of visor or protection on them? Or do you feel that it's more of a disruption if you have that? Um, I think for me, I've tried them. I haven't found one that I totally, totally love yet. Um, so I don't necessarily, I don't use one. Um, every time I have used one, I'd had to go back and cut it after I took it off anyway. So um, the best thing I've found for cutting bangs is this little brush. Oh yeah. So every time I cut bangs, I would have them shut their eyes and I would keep this brush really close by um, to help ensure that I could keep their face clean. Sometimes people use like towels. I've seen that. I've seen the clear visors that look like a spatula, like your client holds it. Mm. I've seen the stick on ones. Um, if you love them, then use them. I don't, I don't see a problem why you couldn't. Um, for me, I just haven't found one that I totally, totally love or feel like I need to have. And a lot of my clients in the salon are pretty aware, like if they have fringe, they know that it's gonna get a little bit messy. So I'm just gonna whittle my way, putting space in this hair a little bit. Yeah, and Vic said that short hair pushes long hair or directs it in the direction that you're sculpting it. So yeah. It's a good way to put it. Yeah, exactly. Larry uses duct tape. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if he means like he puts it on there just to protect their face or he like rolls it up like a lint roller and this, sh you know what I mean? Like rolls it <laughs> I didn't even think about that. Yeah, Isabel loves the brush idea. You're welcome, Isabel. We actually got it in New York when Isabel was my model. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Isabel's been one of my favorite models I've ever used. So I'm just working now. I'm going to work through the middle because I feel like the middle needs, needs to be a little bit shorter. So I'm going to use the same technique. Cutting short to long. This is where, like, moving your scissor in your hand really becomes an asset mm. for what you do. Um, just because I'm able to stand in front of the head and cut a backhand line almost downward with the kind of way that I can hold my scissors. So there is a benefit to uh, building some dexterity on how you hold your scissor. And right now is a great time to do it with some free time sitting around, sitting on the couch, 
watching TV, whatever that looks like. And then Rose is asking, where would you buy that brush? It looks very soft. Um, this brush, I believe, we got from Seiko when we were Seiko booth. Yeah, Seiko. When we, uh, IBS New York. Yeah, I think you can get it online now. Yeah, they're yeah. great. Yeah, they're awesome. At, at hair shows and stuff, they'll have like a great little deal on them. So you're able to kind of get them for less. Richard McDade said to wait until, to wait to have them put their lip gloss on until afterwards. Yeah, smart <laughs> yeah. as well. It's so smart. Yeah. And Teresa is really nice. She said, just a side note, the flow of u two's energy is so natural and easy to watch. Thank you so much. Ah, oh, Teresa. She's one of my favorite people. Yeah, thank you. Such a genuine person. Got a great salon um, in Richmond, Virginia. Mm. Uh, Richmond, Virginia. <laughs> and uh, also such a curator of like cool stuff. She actually makes her own candles that you can get that smell like heaven. So... Uh, do that one more time. I'm going to kind of back up a little bit just to show some body position of how I was. Yeah, like how you're standing, like as a whole. Yeah, like where you're standing as if I'm going to back so up here a little I'm bit. So I'm looking here works. at where the hair is, and I'm coming down with my scissor. Working my way from the inside out. This is a lot of like salon reality as well because where that little front piece of the tripod is is where their knees and their legs would be, the yeah. part of the chair. So you kind of standing off to the side allows you to do that a little bit. Cutting short to long. Yeah. And then what are, what are your, some of your um, ways that you would potentially have them practice that at home? Some, kind of similar to what we just did there, maybe in front of a mirror. Yeah, in front of a mirror. Or if you set your phone up, you can videotape it. Um, that's kind of a cool way to do it is to look at yourself, how you're doing it. Because you want to try and avoid doing like a lot of crazy bending and things like that yeah with your body with your body you want to be able to keep your shoulders your neck and your head as upright as possible um, that'll help your body last longer in this in this industry you know cool cool um got a little area in the back here that i'm going to clean up this i'm going to make strong i think i'm just going to do it i'm not going to ask you people <laughs> <laughs> so i'm looking at where the hairline is it's pretty high up so that tells me that I can actually go straight through and create kind of like a cool nice. So I'll take a look at that, see if that's where I want it to be. Go a little shorter, I think. And what I'll do is I'll position the head so that I can work on that outline and keep my body upright. This is like that part of the haircut where you could work on it for like a day. Yeah. I think Stephen Moody says he'll work on an outline. Could work on an outline for a day. Somebody did. I don't know if it was him. So now I've switched to using just the points of my scissors. This is called chipping. So chipping my outline in. A little straggler hair there I'm gonna get. Cool. Then I'm gonna do the same over here on this side. Richard McDade was kind of asking uh, a little bit about the point of the scissor. He's asking if they're the really pointy ones. Uh, these are the really pointy ones, Richard. Yeah, they're really pointy. What do you think the benefit of having a scissor that is pretty pointed at the end? 
uh, as opposed to a scissor that has what's called like a safety edge, it's kind of flatter on there. Um, and how would you make the choice of the two? So I think for me, um, in this situation, I like having the extra kind of sharpness to the point. Can you show them too? Um, because it allows you to get really detailed. So those are extra pointy. Um, mm -hmm. I'll show you another pair, stay right there. These ones are actually also very pointy, but not a safety edge. A safety edge is gonna be more flat on the end. Yeah. So just as a comparison, you'll be able to see the difference yeah. on how pointed this black pair is and how much detail you can do. It's like a really sharp pencil versus this one is still a sharp pencil, just not freshly sharpened. Yeah. Nice. And then Whitney was asking, she said, thank you. When's the next time uh, live education time and date? Do you, kinda, um, do you, wanna, do you wanna commit us to something right now? Or <laughs> Our goal was to, after this, to like work on like some dates when we would do some live videos for you guys, which I think is important. And yeah, I know uh, that um, Hairbrain Gerard has a lot of stuff planned. Yeah. Um, a lot of stuff on his calendar already. So you can expect to see a lot of activity and content coming from Hairbrained and Gerard himself doing some stuff from the house. Mm -hmm. um, we'll be doing some things probably from my house. Um, but yeah, we have, we have some, some kind of drive to create some stuff for you guys. So if there is something specific you want to see, drop it in the comments um, or a day and time that works best for you. You want to like do like Saturday school because it's like that was like when you got in trouble in, in, in high school you had to do Saturday school yeah we feel like we're in like detention right now yeah so that's <laughs> kind of like how we all feel right now we're all in detention so that's kind of one thing we were talking about doing too um, but yeah no we, we're just going to keep doing some stuff and try and try and have a positive impact on this industry and this time and hopefully keep us inspired and creative you know Here's like some good questions. Joe is talking, you know, asking a question about what determines your choice of length and the chipping the outline, like the length of the scissor. Length of the scissor. Um, I think for me, I, I use the same scissor, wet, dry, outline, interior, exterior, whatever it may be. So I don't usually change my scissor. Um, but a lot of times I think that the choice of scissor is a really funny question because as we know, when we're in beauty school, we tend to cut hair to our second knuckle. Mm -hmm. Even the length of this scissor being a 5.0, it says 5.0 there, still, if I use the entire blade, is only going to my second knuckle. Right. So as I work across, I'm only going to my second knuckle, even if I open it all the way, right? So anything longer, it just moves my hands farther apart. So for me, using the same scissor and being really comfortable with this mm -hmm. makes me better wet, dry, inside or outside. So, okay. good. yeah. And then, um, <clears throat> and this is the, yeah, so you kind of covered that. That's the actual scissor that you like to do chipping with. Yeah, yeah, this one I like the best, I think. Yeah, I think so too. And then, uh, just real quick, where's the ear? We kind of swung her around there. Let me give you a little bit. There's the back where Lucas was just working. Yep, the ear's then, right here. What we're gonna do now is I'm actually gonna go use a personalizing technique just to slide some of this out. Um, I want it to be all like pretty skinny. Um, I don't want it to be like a curtain. I want it to be a little bit more transparent. So I'm gonna take my scissor, same idea, from the top, the shortest length, and I'm gonna use just the V part of the scissor, and I'm just gonna pump it all the way down. And I'm just gonna repeat that just by picking up the hair in my fingers almost trying to skinny the hair out a little bit. So I want it all to be like pretty transparent. <coughs> so I'm looking for density, I'm feeling it in my fingers. So that's allowing me to decide where that length or where my attention needs to be. <coughs> It's nice. It's quite visual at this point because now I'm dealing with a disconnection that doesn't have 
a wet shape in it. Mm. Questions, comments, concerns, contributions. So cutting that round on round shape, keeping everything really like consistent to what we've learned in beauty school. I think, you know, how we master the basics is what makes us dangerous. What makes us a little bit more comfortable with all the things that we do on a daily basis. Because we didn't do anything, there was no trickery, there was no trying to reinvent the wheel. Um, for us, a lot of what we do is we just try and take what we know for sure physics, gravity, things like that, mm -hmm. and then do some fun stuff with it. See if we can influence it in a different way or look at things a different way or approach it a different way. Joe is wondering the length of the hair, like what is determining the outline that you choose? You kind of talked about that a little bit, like assessing how far from the hairline the outline's gonna be? Yeah, like definitely in the back. Um, when I did the outline in the back, I lifted it. I lifted the hair up so mm -hmm. that I can see how close it was to the out to the hairline. Yeah. Um, and I think for me, knowing kind of how hairlines on mannequins react, you could land it pretty close to the hairline on a mannequin and have it look pretty good. So um, that was my choice of length. Now this I know is uncut, so I actually want to maintain. The length I have, I just want it to be skinnier. So as you can see, this side's been refined and personalizes a lot less hair, moves differently, you can see through it, where this is a bit more like a, like a curtain, you know? So I'm yeah. gonna go through and approach it the same way. So a lot of what I do is I look at where the short hair starts, and I almost do most of what I do to the sections close to the head, because I don't want it to be, um, I don't want to lose too much length. So I'll work closer to where the short hair meets the long hair and create like that little transition. Mm -hmm. uh, a few questions coming through. Um, the sweet brush, uh, Natalie was asking that is from, where do we get those from? Seiko? Seiko, yeah, S-A-C-O. Uh, we got them from them. I believe you can order them online. Um, we got them at the International Beauty Show in New York. Uh, where's my mask? We're not wearing masks. Uh, we're saving them for the people that are working in hospitals so they don't have a shortage. Uh, and the people that are sick need those. Uh, what's your inspiration for this cut? Drake was wondering. Um, my inspiration. Great question, Drake. Yeah. Um, I don't know. My, I, 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 I love like cutting hair. I don't know why I'm always drawn towards like a round on round shape, like mm. a ball. Um, you know, we, we have this saying with our group of friends that everybody kind of has their like go to and mine tends to be, um, something like that, like yeah. something quite short cropped with like an outline. So with that being said, and being that I'm working on a model that are a mannequin that likes all things. Um, mm -hmm. I'm able to take what I would normally do, like a round on round, and leave some disconnection, which I don't normally do. Um, and just to try something different, I think, uh, to take some of what I know and what, uh, some of what I'm really comfortable with, and then some of something that's out of my comfort zone. Like approaching hair this way, like the way I'm doing it right now, very visually, used to be extremely out of my comfort zone and mm -hmm. now has slowly become incorporated into it. So um, just something I felt like would be kind of fun to do, fun to see, and as hairdressers when we're tuning in, um, hopefully something that's like creative and uh, a little bit like fun to watch or think about um, to keep us all kind of going. Hey, Sean was asking any tips for someone in Cosmo School who's watching a lot of videos right now and trying to retain some of the info but not sure of how to use it in real life. Um, great question, Sean. So in cosmetology school, what I would do is take what is most valuable to you from whatever you're doing. Mm. Um, what you feel like is most useful, what you feel like makes the most sense. And, you know, 
take that and use it and put it in. Uh, my friend James likes to say you have a metaphorical backpack that you can pull things out of later. Mm. So those little nuggets, I would encourage you to stuff away, hang on to. You could always revisit videos and watch things and pick up new things. But whatever those couple of things are from the first time you watched it, just hang on to those and whatever speaks to you most. You know, I, I would say that I'm not the best note taker or things like that. But if there is a portion of something that stands out to me, I'm gonna do my best to retain it. So okay. jot it down, screenshot it, talk to someone about it, because I know for me that helps retain information. I know I'm spitting ideas off of Clinton all the time, and we always break it down. So um, those conversations are essential, I think, for me. And Natalie says it's absolutely stunning. She's really grateful for you doing this and love the consistency. Um, and it's beautiful what she needed. She's got a table full of head sheets and notes and she's geeking out all over again, which is awesome. And then cool. Steven, Steven Sanchez says he loves watching the creative process. Um, and then Shelly was wondering about doing, maybe we could do an undercut on a live with somebody sometime in the future. Yeah. There's yeah. nothing we can't do. That's yeah. the cool part, you know? Um, and that's the one thing that I think about right now is like, what do we all want? Because we, we have an opportunity to create and do a lot of things in a different way that we normally wouldn't. And uh, I think that's the fun stuff. You know? yeah. It's almost like going back to our roots. Like, oh, what, what's cool, you know? Um, what can we do that's different? What can we do that's more fun? What what's inspires us, you know? It's an opportunity for us to get a little bit rebellious, a little bit punk rock, like Clint was saying earlier, and do things on mannequins that don't have a say and they just like it all, you know? Yeah. Isabel says a fun class. Definitely a keeper. <laughs> a keeper. Yeah. Oh, keeper. And Jenny really enjoyed the live. MG Education said, nice one, mate. Mara saying, thank you for sharing. Mara, so sweet. Yeah, so just kind of like roughing this texture up like so it looks kind of like weird, creative, editorial. Um, using a little bit of this. Is Tess on? Uh, I don't think Tess is on. But well, I'm going to have to give her a shout out. So Tess sweet. owns a salon. It's called um, Aesthetic Hair Company. Yeah, AHC. I think so. Um, in Detroit, right near Detroit. Um, they make some great products. This is their texturizing spray. Um, it's a cool one that I like to travel with. Um, gives it a nice kind of dry texture to it. So you can kind of rough up loose disconnections like that that are pretty sweet. My wife says it's the only one she uses now. Really? She loves yeah, it? Yeah, oh, that's all she You're going to have to order it from Tess now. Yeah, we will. That's funny. All right, so um, once again, let's recap our shape. Everything was cut round to the head this way. Round to the head this way. Yep. All the way around. All I did was I braided out a section of the hairline on each side that was balanced and the same um, and cut the entire internal shape straight out from its base so 90 degrees to the head shape then we went in we kind of softened up the front hairline so it's quite loose like that mm -hmm. still structured but has a softer edge and then the outline in the back is something stronger it's cool so and you get this kind of roughly weird disconnection you could always cut it shorter make it more suitable depending on what your client wants, so. And then, um, uh, uh, Vic was asking about where can we purchase good mannequins for decent prices? Pivot Point, um, Pivot 25% off. Gerard said 20, 25% off on tripods and mannequins right now. Yep, and then Instagram, MG Education was asking about our Instagrams. Um, so my Instagram is Lucas Doni, and then Clinton on the camera, his is Clinton Cuts Hair, and then we have a, uh, Varsity Hair. Varsity Hair Education. So, cool. All right. Well, if you guys have questions, still be out. Drop it in the comments. Shoot us a message on Instagram once again. Lucas Doney here sharing some stuff from the living room. Um, Clinton cuts hair on the camera. And thank you, Hairbrain. Thank you, community, for jumping in and sharing and being a part of the process. Uh, we love you all. Stay healthy and uh, stay positive. <laughs>